When you hear the name Schumacher, you instantly think of Michael. But his son Mick has been making a name for himself on the F1 ladder as well. His career in motor racing dates back to 2008 when he took part in the Kerpener Kart Challenge Bambini, in which he finished 11th on 223 points. He also took part in the 2008 Open RAC, although there is no information available on this event. An interesting fact about Mick Schumacher was that he used his mother's maiden name, Betch, in his racing career when he started out, to try and limit the pressure of his name being so historic in motorsport. It's a little like the Dunlop name in motorcycling, Way or Haggy name in football. The following year, he had his second attempt at the Kerpener Kart Challenge Bambini, but this time finishing in fourth place on 292 points. In 2010, he made progress yet again in this series, winning the championship on 381 points for KSM Motorsport. Schumacher also picked up a point in the Werner Grosselvammer Memory Trophy, finishing the series in 33rd place. This particular series included the likes of current BMW i Andretti Formula E driver Maximilian Günther and BMW Junior driver in the Nürburgring Langstrecken Siri Max Heise, who won the series. Heise is also the current teammate of Daniel Harper, who we interviewed on this YouTube channel. Make sure you check that out. 2011 was the year Schumacher competed in the ADAC Kartmasters KF3 where he finished 9th place on 59 points. He would also take on some different European competition in the DMV Kart Championship, where he would finish in 11th place on 86 points. Later in the year, Schumacher would finish 3rd in the Euro Winter Cup KF3, ahead of the likes of current F3 driver David Beckman. Beckman would get the better of Schumacher in 2012 Bridgestone Cup Europe KF3, with Schumacher finishing down in 21st place. There were a number of other drivers that you might recognise taking part. Current Campos F3 driver Sophia Flourish, current Trident F3 driver Liram Zendeli, and of course the winner, current Trident F3 driver David Beckman. The rest of 2012 would be a busy year for the son of the seven-time F1 world champion, starting off with a seventh place finish in the ADAC Kartmasters KF3, before a third finish in the DMV Kart Championship. He followed up these results with another third place finish in the Euro Winter Cup KF3. In 2013, we would see Schumacher face future F1 drivers for the first time in Lando Norris in the 42 degree Trofeo della Industri KF3 race. He finished in seventh place with Norris fourth, but both behind current H F3 driver Max Futrell. A third place finish in the German Junior Kart Championship would be followed by a 16th place finish in the WSK Supermaster Series KFJ. This series had so many names that you would be familiar with, including Lando Norris, Nikita Maespin, Dan Tictum, Max Futrell, Robert Schwartzman, Nico Cowrie, Enem Ahmed, Jehan Davrula, Logan Sargent, David Beckman, Sergio Sete Camara and Marino Sato. It was a very t talented field, and that's only a handful of the drivers that took part. He would go against a number of these drivers again in the South Garda Winter Cup, finishing in 17th place. He would then go on to finish third in the CIK FIA International Super Cup, KFJ, rounding out the year with a 19th place finish in the WSK Euro Series, and a 27th place finish in the GIK FIA European KF Junior Championship. 2014 would be Schumacher's final year in karting and he was truly impressive. He finished in second in the CIK FIA World KF Junior Championship behind Ahmed, second to the Deutsche Junior Kart Meisterschaft behind Beckman, before a 10th place finish in the WSK World Supermaster Series. The karting chapter of this career would end with a second place finish in the CIK FIA European KF Junior Championship and a fourth place finish in the WSK Champions Cup, with Schumacher making the step up to single seaters for 2015. Schumacher made the step up to single seaters by taking part in the ADAC Formal 4. Make
Finishing in 10th place, picking up a win and a 3rd place finish around Osherleben. The following year, he would continue his development to finish 2nd in the championship to future Porsche Super Cup driver, Joey Mawson. That 2nd place finish would be with the Prima team, where he stayed with for the 2016 Italian Formula 4 championship. Finishing 2nd behind Marco Servet, 2016 would be a year that Schumacher would cross paths with a sum of familiar names in the F1 feeder series paddock. They now included the likes of Yuri Vips, Juan Manuel Carrera, Felipe Drogovic, Richard Vershore, Sofia Flourish, and Sebastian Fernandes. He would also take part in four races of the MRF Challenge, Formula 2000 that ran between 2015 and 2016, ending the championship in 10th place despite only taking part in quarter of the races. This included two podiums. Schumacher would also take part in the MRF Challenge Super Formula 2000, where he would finish in third place behind Harrison Newey, son of Red Bull Chief Technical Officer and one of the best designers in Formula 1 history, and Joey Mawson. He then made the step up to the FIA Formula 3 European Championship, where he would finish in 12th place behind the likes of winner Lando Norris, Maximilian Gunther, Callum Eilat, Jake Hughes, Guan Yu Zhou, Nikita Mazpin, Harrison Newey, and Jehan de Villa. 2017 would also see Schumacher take part in the Macau Grand Prix, finishing in 16th and last place with Dan Tictum, Lando Norris and Ralph Aaron on the podium. The 2018 FIA Formula 3 European Championship would be the series in which Schumacher would really start making a name for himself. He struggled in the opening half of the season with Dan Tictum taking control of the championship. The second half of the season was nothing but spectacular for the young German, who won 8 of the final 15 races, picking up 4 other podium spots to win the championship ahead of Tictum and Robert Schwarzman. He followed this fantastic season up with a 5th place finish at the Macau Grand Prix, won by Dan Tictum. 2019 saw Schumacher take part in the race of champions representing Germany, alongside Ferrari F1 driver Sebastian Vettel. This would be a rather emotional pairing given Mick's father Michael raced in the event alongside Vettel for many years. Nico Hülkenberg and Pascal Wehrlein would also represent Germany during their time in Formula 1. Schumacher created shockwaves in the motorsport world when he beat Vettel in the head-to-head -head competition, with the Schumacher name getting to the better of Vettel at the race of champions once again before the German duo finished as runners-up behind Johan Christofferson and Tom Christensen of Team Nordic. The young German would drive for Prima in the Formula 2 Championship in 2019, he was under huge pressure to impress with an F1 seat within reaching distance for him. His season didn't go to the best of planned, finishing in 12th place, but this did include a win at the Hungarian sprint race. 2019 would also be the year that Schumacher finally got a taste of Formula 1, with an official test drive with Ferrari and Alfa Romeo. On the Tuesday of the test in April, he followed in his father's footsteps by driving the red car around Bahrain, before taking the wheel off to the Alfa Romeo car for the following day. For 2020, Schumacher would remain with the Prima team, alongside F3 champion Robert Schwarzman. This would create one of the most exciting pairings in the series, with the winner of the team battle likely to get an F1 seat next season. This season is still ongoing, but from a few opening rounds, it is Schwarzman who has the upper hand, but Schumacher has always been in the mix and at the front of it. If it wasn't for fire extinguishers going off and a few easy mistakes, it could be the German out front. We will just have to see what it brings for the rest of the season. Does Schumacher have a future in F1? Well, we believe he does. His name brings not only a great marketing opportunity, but also prestige and drivers around him will want to support him as they've looked up to his father when they were younger. I think over the course of the season, he will get the better of Schwarzman and the extra year experience in F2 might just prove vital. This could mean he could get an F1 seat at Alfa Romeo and this is his really only opportunity, and if he doesn't beat Schwarzman, it might be a little too late for Schumacher, despite being young. And that wraps up this episode's F1 Ladder on Mick Schumacher. If you have any thoughts on this video, make sure you put them down below in the comments as we love to get involved with the conversation. Also, why not check out our social medias, they'll be on screen and in the description below.
Check out our website, The Apex Motorsport, where you can find interesting articles and more stories that we have not covered on the YouTube channel. Once again, thank you all for watching. And if you do enjoy our videos, make sure you hit subscribe. And why not click on one of the videos that's on screen now?